Well, election night sending shockwaves throughout New Jersey as the tight race for governor remains too close to call. And even if Governor Murphy wins a second term, political watchers are saying Republicans are gaining momentum across the U.S. Joining us now to talk about these gains is David Birdsell, provost and senior vice president for academic affairs at Kane University. David, thanks for being with us. Good evening. Great to be here. Well, first off, on a scale of 1 to 10, how surprised were you by the results in Virginia and how surprised are you by what we saw in New Jersey? Not very surprised by the results in Virginia. It's been mm -hmm. clear for several weeks, if not months now, uh, that Terry McAuliffe was going to be running into some pretty strong headwinds and Glenn Youngkin was running an effective campaign. The polling had narrowed and several polls showed him up significantly, which of course proved to be the case. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really quite surprised that Jack Cittarelli was able to keep this so close uh, with Governor Murphy. Uh, it does look like Governor Murphy will probably pull this out when the absentee ballots are counted. The remaining districts, which remain to be counted, are heavily Democratic areas, uh, but still a surprise that this came this close uh, and may still, of course, go to the Republican in this race. Right. Now, the Virginia race being attributed to dissatisfaction with the Biden administration thus far and effectively working the issue of schools at the local level with voters. What do you see when you look at the numbers from New Jersey, when you break down the map? Are there any trends that stand out locally in the results we saw yesterday? Well, I think one trend, and we see this uh, really, I think, uh, throughout the Northeast, and this was true in, in the Long Island red sweep that we saw yesterday, uh, that people are holding Democratic governors accountable for the frustrations of COVID-19 and all of the masking protocols, the vaccination requirements, et cetera, uh, designed to keep the disease at a low ebb, but at the same time causing great inconvenience and some economic disruption. The schools issue in, in, in Virginia was huge. Uh, the Republicans were able to convince parents that they w had too little say in what their parents were being and what their children were being taught uh, and that they should have a larger say and specifically be able to steer them out of courses uh, that relied on critical race theory for their insights into American sociology. Uh, and that has proven to be a galvanizing issue for Republicans. I think one of the key things coming out of this is enthusiasm. Democratic enthusiasm was down in every single one of the counties in Virginia, uh, in most of the counties in New Jersey as well. And that explains the tightness of that election and the victory for Glenn Young. And today, uh, the president held a press conference to tout the uh, booster shots or the vaccinations of children 5 to 11 when he was asked about what Democrats have to do to save off similar results a year from now. He said we have to produce results for them. Do you think Democrats, they've been stuck in this negotiation amongst themselves trying to get these big spending bills passed. Will this light a fire under them to get that done quicker now that they've seen the results of yesterday? Well, if they're interested in their political survival, it certainly should light a fire under them. But it's an open question right now. This clearly has been a very bad 24 hours uh, for the party's left wing. And it could be that centrists and people toward the right wing of the party, such as Joe Manchin, such as Kirsten Sinema, both in the Senate, they may interpret this as a reason to dig in their heels and try to gain more concessions out of the left. Mm -hmm. And that would further delay the achievement of results. And that, in my view, is the most important drag on the Democratic Party right now. If there's going to be a different result next November in the much wider array of races up in the midterm election cycle, then they're going to have to show that they can pass legislation and people are going to have to feel positive results from that legislation mm -hmm. or we're going to be having the same conversation in 2022. Very and just briefly we've only got a few seconds left how do you take those numbers and apply them to New York governor race who do you think is in a better position today than they were yesterday of the candidates we know thus far? I think it probably advantages the uh, the, the incumbent, Kathy Hochul, mm -hmm. uh, because she's the most moderate voice in that race right now. And clearly, if you were a Democrat, being in the moderate wing of the party was good for you yesterday. Being in the liberal, liberal wing of the party was not. Very well. We always appreciate your insight. David Birdsell, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.